Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Beginning this morning, ministering along the lines of developing spiritual sensitivity, why we need to and how to. Amen. And I believe Paul's uh, letter uh, to Timothy gives us a very clear insight into why we need to be spiritually sensitive. Now, I've hit on a couple of these things in the past week along the lines, but I want to minister it in a more formal manner than just kind of hitting on it. So we'll begin reading here. We will read the entire chapter uh, 3 and then the first five verses of chapter 4. This know also that in the last days. How many would think we're living in the last days? Amen. All right. Well, most of you. That's good. <clears throat> Those that don't, well, that's all right. We are. Hallelujah. Let me think. Let me say when John wrote and said this, even so come Lord Jesus, he thought he was coming back any minute. That's been 2,000 years almost, so we're 2,000 years closer to the return of the Lord. He's coming back soon. I mean, the signs of the time are getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. You know, things going on and Israel being hated and all this kind of stuff. You know, and, and just we could go into a lot of end time event things we're not going to. Just know this, it's the last days. Yeah. Notice he said that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now, don't be surprised when they come. Be ready. What did Paul write to the church at Ephesus? Take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand when? In the evil day. What's an evil day? It's a perilous time. Perilous times are evil days. He said, be equipped. Isn't that what he said? <clears throat> Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand... Stand therefore. Phyllis' uh, translation uh, said this. said, having fought the battlefield of the end, be ready to remain on the battlefield, ready to fight again. Amen. We don't win this battle and go, oh, praise God, oh, I got a victory. Amen. When you get a victory, get ready for the counterattack. I'm, I'm going I'm to take a side journey here, all right? I'm, I'm in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. It's your responsibility. Don't let me forget that. Three, you're out. All right. <clears throat> yeah, a number of years ago, we were here at the church, and this lady, uh, this lady with a friend came by, and she, um, she came in, and she was deaf, and she wanted some books on healing, and, 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 and with her friend and her uh, talking, you know, and deaf people can learn to talk, but it's, it's normally kind of a, and I'm not making fun of them, but it's more of like a, no, nah, no, because they can't really hear, they articulate their language and so forth, and, but, but we found out she had actually been healed before, had her healing completely restored. For a week. Oh my God. And woke up one day and it started losing it and she lost it. Now, Dad Hagen always said this. He said that, that whatever the enemy, you, that you get back from the enemy, he will try to come back and get it at, at another point in time. Right. Hello. Let me say this. You got to stand your ground. Amen. And although you got the victory in the beginning, when, that, when he comes back, you know, devil. Now, um, you know, and of course, she, we, we talked to her. We didn't see her anymore because we, we, we invited her to come to church. She sent in the teaching, you know. We got her some books and gave them to her and that kind of thing. <clears throat> but uh, the thing is, we don't want to lose what we got. We got to take our stand, take our stand strong, and not only take our stand, but advance on the enemy. Uh, when when uh, we first moved into our home, there was a, a couple houses down. There was a neighbor, and they were... Um, uh, they were getting ready to leave in a few, in a couple of months. Their, their, her husband had a job transfer, but she was in our driveway one day with her little girl on her bicycle, and um, and she got to talking to us about you know her, her daughter having uh, epileptic epileptic fits, mm -hmm. and you know and it just just scared her so bad because you know you know and if you've ever seen anybody going with an epileptic fit, it's it's it can be very scary, especially with a smaller child, you know, for a parent, and 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 so we were just talking to her. I said, "Do you mind if I pray for your daughter?" And, and she said, "No." No, you've got to get permission in that case. And so I, I got down on my knees right there with that little girl, and she's on her bicycle, and I just, I, I rebuked that spirit of epilepsy. I commanded her body to be made whole, commanded from the top of her head to the sole of her feet. Look at the mom's just bawling. So you can touch people Amen. by walking in the anointing. Amen. Amen. And, um, you know, and then they, they moved, 
And she came back to visit, oh, like maybe six months later, and, and we saw her. And, and I, stopped, I said, hey, how's your daughter? She said, you know, and, and of course I instructed her. I said, now look. I said, Satan will always try to come back and see if he's got a foothold here. I said, for you so much, so much you see the first sign is you rebuke and say, in the name of Jesus, I command you to go and not come back. She said she had one more episode. I rebuked you just like you told me. And I haven't had it. It hadn't happened since. Amen. Praise God. Praise Amen. God. See, you're, I'm telling you, you've got to take your stand in the name of Jesus and advance on the enemy and not let him have his foothold. Can you say amen? amen. So know in the last day, perilous times are going to come. Yeah. See, back, back in the 90s, you could teach prosperity and it didn't work for anybody because everything was good anyway. Right. Right. Really. <laughs> Let's think about it. I mean, you know, I, mean, I remember back in the day of the, of the Word of Faith, you know, when we started the, the Word of Faith churches. We just, you could take a little sign and say, Word of Faith, you had to say, you just put W-O-F. <laughs> Go down some alley somewhere, back in a dark alley, hang a hanging outside, and your church would fill up. Whoa, well, we're doing everything right now. It was, just, it was just a move of God. God was just, people were just finding stuff like that. You didn't have to work. You didn't have to do anything. They'd show up. You could get up and read a book. I know one pastor who started this church and ended up with 600 churches under him. I mean, I think it's 1,000 now. Number of ministers under him. He started his church, and here's how he preached every Sunday. He took a Brother Hagen book and read it. When he got done, he said, good night, we'll see you next week. And it grew. Hallelujah. Now, now if you don't have a rock climbing wall with a zip line, you know, and a diving pool and tank and all that kind of stuff, you don't have everything I want. So we, we got to understand, you know, you, the things come and go. Prosperity back in the 90s, you could teach, yeah, if God wants you to prosper, you know, and people were prospering who weren't even using their faith. Because everything was like that. Now it's not like that. Perilous times have come financially. Y'all know that? Amen. So what are we going to do? You're going to have to use your faith. I and mean, you're going to have to really use your faith. You've got to get out there and put it to work. Somebody say amen. Because, wow, we're living in perilous times. We're living in days where it's, it's not happening just because the economy's good. But you can prosper in the midst of famine. God will prosper you in famine. We have a missionary friend who um, uh, knew somebody in Africa, and they had gone in there, and that, that guy, this guy had gotten saved, and the, the village had gotten saved. And, 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 and this, this part of Africa was under a seven-year drought. But they had food all the time. Because they said, they went out and they started confessing that, that, you know, that God causes their seed to prosper. And every day a cloud would come up and come over their little village, over their farm, and rain on them and nowhere else. And so what happened? All the villages around them started coming in the food. What happened there? They started getting them saved. Because their village had food. Why did their village have food? Because they believed God. Amen. I'm telling you, see, when we say that the last days perilous times are coming, don't mean to get afraid and hunker down. It means to stand up and get ready. Glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Like that song, I'm going to the enemy's camp, and I'm going to take back what he took from me. Hallelujah. Why? Because Jesus is our jubilee. Can you say amen? amen. <coughs> Hallelujah. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. That, that, that means you don't respect authority. Boy, do we live in that time. Pastor says something you don't like, you don't have to honor him anymore. They'll go out and talk about you. Yeah, yeah, that's that same old line, disobedient to parent devil. Hello. Unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, need I say any more. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Boy, you walk around telling you that you love Jesus and you don't drink and you don't smoke and you don't dip and you don't do anything else. I mean, you keep yourself pure and they'll make fun of you. Oh, he's one of them. What was one of them? You know, one of them. What? A do-gooder. Uh, and if you're, if you're a Pentecostal, you were a holy roller. I grew, I grew up Pentecostal holiness, you know. We were called holy rollers because they thought all we did was roll under the pews and roll out the front door of the church and hung from the chandeliers. And we did all those things. Anyway, <laughs> hallelujah. I said, when the Holy Ghost gets on you, praise God, you just can't help yourself, can you, sometime. All right. Trady, sorry, traders, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. We're living in an era that, you, that the church, it shouldn't be this way. 
The church is competing with ESPN. The church is competing with Carowinds. The church is competing with the, uh, with, uh, the gentleman only ladies forbidden place, golf. That was the acronym where it came from. So ladies, just so you know, that's, it's your husband playing a, a sport that was male chauvinist pig invented. Anyway. But lovers of pleasure is more than lovers of God. How, and, you know, and so our churches are now trying to compete with that, with our rock climbing walls, with our smoke shows, with, you know, the diving tanks, with the, with the artsy performances, all these different things. I mean, look, don't think, I'm not blasting that. What I'm saying is we have moved into a place we're trying to compete with something that we're not supposed to be competing with. Because I want you to know something. You can have all those things, but absent the anointing, they mean nothing. Because that rock wall will not break the yoke or destroy or remove the burden from your neck. That fancy, cool, you know, artsy show that you did won't do anything unless it's anointed. So if you are doing those things, make sure that they're not artsy, they're anointed. It's all right to do it as long as it's anointed. But we're trying, to, we're trying to find methods to draw people into the church when what we need to do is get aside, get into the presence of God, get filled with the Holy Ghost again, glory to God, and come out full of faith and power anointed by the Spirit of God. Why? Because that's what sets the captives free. If you've got an anointed rock climbing wall, Shanda. Got any old charismatics in here? If you are, I know you heard the word Shanda at least once. All right? Hallelujah. You don't hear it much anymore. I don't know what the new guys say, but the old guys, you had to say Sunday to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And my roommate at Ramah, before he went, he, was, he, he told some people, he said, yeah, he was, he was Baptist. Now, he wasn't just Baptist. He was Southern Baptist with a D. But it was down, down in the little town in, in eastern North Carolina called Blackjack, there was the Pentecostal Free Will Baptist Church. Now, they were free will Baptists, but they were, they were filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues. And uh, some of these ladies from that church got a hold of him and, and said, well, their, their mission was to get him filled with the Holy Ghost. And, they, and so they took him out one day in the back of the car. He's in the car, and they, they're ministering to him. He's got the seek of the Holy Ghost. He said, I'm going to tell you one thing. When I get filled with the Holy Ghost, there's one thing I'm not going to do. And they said, what's that? He said, I'm not going to say Shanda. <laughs> well, he got filled with the Spirit. And then they, after about 15, 20 minutes of speaking in tongues and you know, riding around just shouting and praising God, they turned around and said, you know what you were doing? He said, they said, you were going, it's about that Sunday, it's about that Sunday, it's about that Sunday. About every other word, Sunday. Don't tell God what you won't do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, we had a, back in our church in Greenville, um, we had a couple there, and um, he, he was going down to the prayer, get prayed for. He had told his wife, he said, I'm, I've been going down there, but I'm not going to fall like all those other people are. So Pastor John was praying for him. He looked down at his feet, and his toes were touching his shins. And when he saw that, he just went, whoop. <laughs> don't, tell, don't tell God what you're not going to do. Amen. Well, anyways, forget all that. That's just a side journey. We, perilous times are coming. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such... Put your arm around him and tell him that you love him and be a Barney to him. I love you. He said, from that such, turn away. Isn't that what he says? From such, turn away. We're not, we're not supposed to, to spend all of our time hanging around people who are, who are walking in the flesh. You can go minister to them. They're a ministry opportunity, but they're not a fellowship uh, place. For this sort are, are they which creep into houses and lead silly, captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, now they're not listed in the Old Testament actually, but theologically they're believed that these are from writings in the past, that these are the two magi uh, magicians of Pharaoh who withstood Moses when he came to Pharaoh's court. Okay? Uh, so do, the, listen, just like they, he says, Withstood Moses, so do these. He's talking about these people here who, who are what? Lovers of their own selves and that whole list. Resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith. 
but they shall proceed no further. And I'm telling you something, there's a lot of junk going on in the church today. People are in and they're, they're like, they're like the, uh, what we used to call, what they call the carpet baggers. After the Civil War, the, the guys, people came down and, and took people's uh, lands and other possessions for pennies on the, on the hundreds of dollars. And they called them carpet baggers. And they were, they were just, and, and, they were, and they weren't any more honest or, or fair than, than, than any evil person in the planet. They, they saw an opportunity to take advantage of, of a bad situation. And there are people in the church. They're not, they're not anointed of God. They're not called of God. They're teaching false doctrines, and people follow them like they are the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why we have, I'm telling you, we have to be spiritually sensitive in this day. Well, they got a big crowd. So stinking what? Amen? We, we get so caught up. I'm telling you, there are lying signs and wonders that the devil will do. If you're following after signs and wonders, about Jesus said, the evil generation seek signs. We're to follow after God. We're to hear his voice. We're to listen to the spirit of God. We're not to be led because someone, you know, laid hands on four people and they got healed. <coughs> Amen. One of, one of the leaders of the healing revival was cut short in his ministry because he got into error. Now, just, just you know, it's, it's, it's historical. I'm not, but Branham, even you got to where they call his teaching Brannanism. He could line 10 people up that were deaf or dumb and instantly get them healed. Nine out of 10 every time. And Brother Lindsay went to him one time and says, you don't need to be teaching what you're teaching. It's not right. And he said, you're not a teacher. He said, stop trying to teach. He said, yeah, but I want to. And about a year and a half before he died, Dad Hagen uh, was, was in prayer with Brother Lindsay. He said, Air, another year shall come and go. And he who stands at the forefront of the healing ministry will no longer be among us. Not that he won't be with us, but he'll be absent from the earth. Put that in photo, that put it in, in, and Brother Lindsay put it in a locker in his office, a vault. On December the 26th or something of the year and a half later, he was in an automobile accident. And they were all went to pray at a meeting. They were at a meeting and went to pray. And the Lord spoke to Brother Hagin and said, I told, don't, don't you go pray. He, he said, what, Lord? He said, don't you remember what I told you? And on December 31st before midnight, he, he passed away. Why? Because he started teaching things that he, and trying to get into areas he wasn't supposed to be. Why? Because he wanted to. We got to stay with what God called us to do. We can't be lovers of ourselves more than lovers of God. We have to love God. I, my pastor in Greenville, he, um, he, he started the series. I didn't get to listen to it. I just got to hear the title. You know, and, and his little blip he put on Facebook about, you know, uh, do you love me? Do you love me? Talking about Jesus. And he said that we, we're to minister to people, not because we love people, but because we love Jesus, because that's who called us. Amen. Well, I, that, that kind of just that shook me. I thought, you know, I never really looked at it that way. You know, so, you know, because we, 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 we're here because we love you. No, I'm here because I love Jesus. Jesus told me to come. I'm obeying him. I love Jesus. Jesus is the head of the church. I'm in obedience to him. So if you're here or not here, I'm going to love him and do what he told me to do. Whether you're here or not, I'm going to keep doing what I'm told. Because I love him. Do you love the Lord? More than yourself. Well, I don't like Pastor Ed. He's, he's brash. But did the Lord tell you to come here? I've had people say, I'm supposed to be here. Look, this is my church. No matter what, I'm with, I'm with you, Pastor. Three months later, something happens, and they're out the door. Amen. Well, that's, that's, your, that's between you and the Lord. I'm here because I love Jesus. Amen. Amen. But you got, people in the, you got people coming out. you got money changers. you got people coming to the church who are getting rich off the gospel. They're looking for something cute. They're looking for a saying that tickles your ears. Let me tell you something, folks. There are, there are doctrines in the church right now that are false doctrines, that are of the devil. They're doctrines of devils. They're sent by, by the devil through emissaries of the devil to get you out of line with the word of God and to get you sidetracked from that which God called you to do. And you better watch. You got to be spiritually sensitive so that when it comes, you know what to do. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs was also. But thou hast, and then Paul uh, begins to give a, uh, an account of his own life. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, 
manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch and Iconium at Lystra. We talked about this in our Wednesday night series. Um, what persecution I deserve, but out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Can you say glory? glory? Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You're going to get persecuted. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Oh, my. Not only being, not only deceived, but getting deceiving, but being deceived. The deceived, teaching people and getting them deceived. I was, I was telling um, in the office when we were talking, I was saying there's a move out of Africa right now that, that you know, the, vo the, voice of, the voice you hear, supposedly God, is more important and a higher value and a higher authority than the written word. Oh, yeah, because only in one place is, the, actually, Jesus is the only one that's called the word of God. The Bible's not called the word of God, which is, er is, which is erroneous. And people are now, because they hear a voice, because a voice speaks to them, are now uh, saying that voice has more authority than the written word. Honey, I got news for you. No, it doesn't. That's why we have to be students of the word. And every time, so if, you, if you're building all your belief system and doctrine on somebody going, well, you know, I walked through the house the other day and, and I heard the Lord say, and they don't give you any scripture to back up what the Lord say. You don't listen to what he said the Lord say. Amen. You got to prove it out with the word. You got to know what the word says about it. I'm telling you, the Bible, Paul wrote, and he said this. He, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, <coughs> Luke wrote about Paul's journey. He said, the, we, they got to, the, to Berea, and they said, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica. And that they received the word of God with all readiness of mind mm -hmm. and searched the scriptures daily to see whether those things be so or not. You need to be a Berean. You need to know what the word says. And if I get up here and say, well, you know, the Lord told me that it's all right to have seven wives. Well, for, first of all, anybody that's, that's got an unmarried daughter here, you better run. Because any pastor, anybody that says that kind of thing is looking for another woman. Hello, just like the guy up, up few, about 15, 20 years ago up near Virginia State Line, Daniel. Up in Daniel, he got a revelation he could have more than one wife, and so he married some 16-year-old girl in the church with the parents' permission, but it wasn't really a legal marriage because you can't have but one wife in the state of Virginia, and so they were married before God. He was in the gym lifting weights. His wife had gone gotten, you know, old-looking. He was trading, he really he was really doing he was trading her in for a new model. But he had a revelation. You watch out for revelations that that um, empower and elevate an individual over the word. Amen. If it's a revelation that a person has that exalts him above the word, it's a doctrine of devils. Jesus said, I'll be lifted up from the earth, and I will draw all men unto me. He didn't say he'll draw all men into you. Amen? So he goes on and says, Yea, and all that will live in God, the, 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 evil doers, evil men, and seducers shall wor wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. What did Paul say to do about that? But that continue thou in the things which you've learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou, thou, thou hast learned them. Listen to Paul says to Timothy, And that from a child thou hast known the holy what? Scriptures. What did Paul tell Timothy was his secure anchor in the midst of deception? Scriptures. The Scriptures. When there's deception going on, he says here, that, You know, from a child you've known the holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Amen? Through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Then he goes on and says, verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. God breathed. God breathed them. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Notice what he said here. Now, if you look at that, two of those, what we kind of put on the positive side, two on the negative side. Doctrine and instruction. Woo! Praise God. We like that. Reproof and rebuke. 
Don't like our correction. Don't like that so much. But if you don't get the reproof and you don't get the correction, you won't be thoroughly furnished. And if you don't receive it, come on now. Most of the time, people get mad and leave the church when you, when you reprove or rebuke them with the word. And want to know, who do you think you are? I'm the pastor sent by God to reprove and rebuke, correct, and instruct. Amen. Amen. That's my job. Well, I don't like that. Who do you think you are to tell me I'm wrong? Pastor, anointed by the Holy Ghost, obey those with the rule over you. Why? For they can give an account of your soul with joy. You don't, want to, you don't want me getting up to heaven going, Lord, I'm going to tell you one thing. Jerry gave me a fit. <laughs> Every time I preached something, he rebelled against it. I'd preach the word of God. He'd be in sin. And I'd preach the word of God and he'd rebel and say, who does he think he is? So, Lord, reward him according to what he did. You don't want that. You want me going to heaven? I've got to give an account for your soul with joy. You want me going, Lord, Janice was the best member we ever had. <laughs> Janice was the best member we ever had. Hallelujah. She kept Jerry straight when he was trying to rebel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chapter 4. Charge thee therefore before God. Why? Because there's going to be all these things going on in the church. And the Lord Jesus Christ, who judges the quick, who shall judge the quick and the dead that is appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Listen to this. Listen to Paul's charge to a pastor. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Y'all hear you going home. Paul told his young minister, and because of all this stuff, reprove, rebuke, and exhort. Woo! Y'all read that scripture, hadn't you? How many have just kind of passed right over that one? Just zip right by that one. Don't want to hear that one. Move on, Pastor. Get to something exciting. Why? Why do this? For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap unto themselves what? Teachers. Having itching ears. And shall, be tur and shall turn away their ears from the truth. Now in the Greek here, this word turn, this word turn, and shall turn their ears, means they deliberately resist hearing the truth. They don't want to hear it. Yeah, I know it says that, but God showed me. I've had people in the church do that. You know, the Bible says one thing, they say, yeah, but now the Lord showed me that I don't have to do such and such. Well, no, he didn't. You deliberately turn away from the truth and shall be turned. Now, this word's a different Greek word, and it means to turn without knowing. Because they resisted the truth, they are deceived or led unto fables in the word Greek where there's myths. As a result of resisting the truth, they are led into believing in myths or fables without even knowing it. Thinking they're right. There are people right now who believe all kinds of things and think they're right. And they're wrong. It doesn't line up with the Bible. There are people who believe right now. Like I said, you know, they're, they're buying into this teaching. Uh, it's coming out of Africa, and it's, and it's spreading, and it's moving in different parts of the world. It's getting into America right now. You know, the, the, the voice you hear, you know, they claim it's the Holy Ghost. But let me say this. The Word of God in 1 John says that the Word and the Spirit agree. So you're not going to get a word from the Holy Ghost that disagrees with His Word, His written Word. And I'm just going to tell you, you're not going to get one. Yea, the Lord says, thou, don't have to, thou dost not have to walk in love. Are you ready? 
Did we get a lot of spray on the television camera on that one? Couldn't get any, huh? Give you a flying raspberry on that one. You're getting words that do not line up with the Scripture. It is not from God. Hello? How do you know that? Because, the, because the, the Jesus said, the Lord Jesus Christ said, my doctrine is not mine, but him that sent me. And then he said this, the Holy Spirit, when he comes, will bring to your remembrance what I said. He said this, actually said this, he will not speak of himself. He'll bring to your remembrance what I said. What does all that mean? It means that the Holy Ghost is going to say what the Word says. You're not going to get a revelation outside the Word of God. Hello? Dad Hagen was talking a number of years ago. They were standing talking to a group of ministers. This is back in the 50s. And said that, you know, they had this guy, he was trying to teach, share with some new revelation he had. Of course, Brother Hagin's a stickler for the Word. He said, well, I, I don't, brother, I can't agree with that. It's not in the Bible. He said, show me in the Word where that is. And the guy went, oh, I'm out beyond that thing. You're too far for me if you're out beyond the Bible. And you start calling it a thing, you're, out, you're too far for me. Amen. Let me just tell you, you're, on the, you're setting your path on the way to destruction. Amen. You can't lead the Word of God. Amen. Somebody shout glory. glory. But then what did you tell Timothy? You know, they, these people have itching ears, turn for the truth, turn in the fables. In other words, they deliberately resisted correction from the Word of God. That's what we're talking about here. And because they did, they were turn without their knowing into believing in myths. That's, so there's two, there's two words, two different Greek words for turn and turning here. They're, they're not the same. They're not like the, you know, one's the verb, one's the adjective. They're, they're two different words that mean two different things. One is to deliberately set yourself against, and then the second one, turning, and they're turning into fables, is because they're in that state, they're now led into believing in fables, and they don't even realize it. What's the worst kind of deception? Self-deception. It's the most difficult kind of deception to recover from. We have to say that God's word is final authority. And if you cannot prove it out with the word of God, honey, you can't deal with it. You can't have it. People come along, they always, always teach you some new, some new heavy revy. Oh, I, the Lord showed me. And a lot of that is they want to be known in the forefront. They want to be considered special because they came up with it. But honey, you don't need to go looking for a revelation. Just be a steward of the mysteries of God we already have. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Glory to God. Amen. And then Paul turns back to Timothy again, and he says this, But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Be watchful. Can you say Amen. And so the times that we're living in are perilous times. They're difficult times. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of junk going on. Are you here? People are not enduring sound doctrine. They're resisting sound doctrine. I'm telling you, if you tell people that they got to submit and obey and tithe and give and be faithful to the church, they'll get mad at you and leave. Amen. Hello. Amen. They only want to know if they can come and, and make sure they, they want to go to heaven, whatever their concept of heaven is, but they don't want to do anything to get there. They want to be able to live in sin and claim grace. Oh, that don't matter. I'm under grace. I'm sorry, it does matter. Jude said people have entered in and turned the, the grace of God into lasciviousness. The Greek, another word that can be translated is lasciviousness. Turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. Paul wrote in another place that talked about how that people have, you know, the grace of God and use it and to condone and allow people to get away with stuff. Amen. That's not grace. I said, that's not the grace of God. There are doctrines floating around in the church all the time. Next week, there'll be another one. About 20 years ago, it was warring tongues. People get together and scream at the devil in tongues until they couldn't even talk. We have no, we have no scriptural evidence ever that there was warring tongues. Amen. Now, let me say this. I don't doubt people have been in the spirit and God through them, they did spiritual warfare yes. by the unction of the Holy Ghost. But you can't teach somebody to do that. That's right. You can't teach people how to intercede. Yes. 
You can't get into an intercessory spirit because I taught you how. You have to, that's an unction of the Holy Ghost that you yield and learn by His voice. Amen. They also had the army of God. He had to go up to the tallest building in town and pull down the, the strongholds over the city. He had people running around in military uniforms coming to church, renting helicopters, renting the top floor, the tallest building, and going up there and doing spiritual warfare. And you were unspiritual if you weren't doing it. No, I just can't find it in here. If I can't find it, number one, if you can't find it in here, you can't teach it. You may have experiences in the Spirit that you can't ever teach. Hello? Why? Because they were secret things. You can't go teach them. You can't train people to do it. That was an experience in the Spirit. And you may or may not ever have that happen again. Well, I'm going to teach you how to prophesy, Jeff. First of all, I say, yay. And again, I say, yay. If you don't start that way, you go this way. The word of the Lord is coming to be saying. Just put a lot of thou sons and my daughters in there. And say, and it shall come to pass in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Throw whatever else you want to in there. And you can make it sound like it's the Holy Ghost. But it's all flesh. Now, if it's the Spirit of God, if, if the Word of the Lord comes up to you saying, that's how God ministers, fine. Hello? I've been in services where, you know, every service, some this lady wanted to get up and prophesy. Every service. And, you know, we, we just got out of this, like this awesome worship time. Spirit of God is just heavy on the congregation. And then she's wanting to, you know, give a word every Sunday. And you may as well have got up a bucket of ice cold water and dumped on the congregation. Killed everything that was going on. Because it wasn't God. But she wanted to prophesy. You can be yielded to the Holy Ghost. He's not going to use you every single service to prophesy and kill what just happened. Hallelujah. We're living in a time we must be spiritually sensitive to the atmosphere around us. We must be discerners of truth because we know the word. You've got to know the word to discern truth. The spirit of truth may be in you, and he may be unctioning you that something's not right, but you still got to go find out from the word why it's not right. I've had that happen. You just say, something's not right about that, and you got to go study. Just can't, just can't put my finger on it. Something's not right about it. I can't put my finger on it. Well, I can't, I don't know, but I just can't put my finger on it. You got to go pray that out and study that and find out why. And I'll tell you what, you'll find out why. God will give you the answer. And sometimes you can't even share that with anybody because they won't receive it. Hello? You, you know, you always kind of got like I look at and say, well, if you're going to be dumb, you're going to have to be tough. You will receive if you resist the truth. Hallelujah. Where is that scripture? Oh, where, oh, where is that scripture at? Oh, where, oh, where could it be? It's in my Bible somewhere. Hallelujah. Brother Bill, where's the scripture? He resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Anybody know where that is right off? Thank you, between Genesis and Revelation. <laughs> Cap, that's got your promotion. James 4. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he said, God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. I had a, a friend of mine, 1 Peter 5, 5, that, that was saying, you know, God is just as much at work resisting the proud as he is giving grace to the humble. That went over big, didn't it? 
See, everybody's talking about, the, you're talking about grace, 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 grace. He's just as much. Okay? Likewise, you younger, 1 Peter 5, 5, that submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, and all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and gives grace to the humble. That's what I was looking for. Notice he says here, I asked somebody to tell me you don't have to submit. I'm not going to get into the rest of my sermon this morning. It's just, we're, just, we're, we're running out of time. It's, it's noon already. I've got an hour's worth of minister right now. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pick it up tonight. I'll pick it up next Sunday morning. But let me say this. When you think you know, this is why it's so important to be spiritually sensitive. People will come and give you things, and you might go, wow, that is deep. Man, that's awesome. And it tickles your ears. Make sure you don't have itching ears. And you're heaping to yourself teachers because you have itching ears. And you're getting something that you like instead of what the Word of God, and stay humble and stay submitted. Your pastor, me, you're in this church, I'm your pastor. I do not just come up here and flap my jaws and feed the plants. Amen. I'm anointed by the Holy Ghost to speak. And words will come out of my mouth that I will not have pre-planned or pre-designed or tried to aim at anybody, but they'll come out of my mouth and they will be directly aimed at you by the Holy Ghost. And they are words of correction, they are words of reproof, they are words of rebuke, they are words of exhortation, they are words of doctrine, they are words of instruction and righteousness. And you're not always going to be one or the other, it might be one that you don't like. You might get the reproof and the rebuke this week. But let me tell you, it was because the Holy Ghost is trying to keep you from turning away or resisting the truth. And if you resist, God will resist the proud. If you'll humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and you will receive the correction that his Holy Spirit gives you, the instruction that his Holy Spirit gives you, the exhortation that his Holy Spirit gives you, uh, amen, the reproof that the Holy Spirit gives you, correction, reproof, rebuke, that the Spirit of God's given you through the pastor, whoever's ministering in the pulpit. If you'll humble yourself, he'll give grace to you. And then instead of you resisting and turning deliberately away from the truth and then being led into believing in myths, you'll be steadfast and stable with your feet anchored on the rock. And when the winds and storms of life come, you won't fall over because you dug deep and you put your foundation in the word of God. Not in that which took if you If you cannot receive correction, reproof, reproof, and rebuke, then you are not on the rock. Amen. Say it, Pastor. Hit it again. <coughs> Bobblehead it. Come on. <laughs> if you will not receive reproof, if you will not receive correction, if you will not receive rebuke, everybody receives instruction and doctrine. Woo! They love all the goodies. They might not want to eat their black-eyed peas and cow tongue. Let me say this. Yeah, but hot sauce, yeah. I've learned that. When Joe comes over to our house to eat, you've got to have hot sauce. He puts it on everything. You know, Joe plays sax. He's back in town, and uh, hopefully Joe's going to spend some more time with us this year. But Joe comes over to our house to eat with us, stay with us, he's got to have hot sauce. On what? Everything. He, he puts hot sauce in the plate, and then puts hot sauce on the hot sauce. Aside, anyway, the Bible says this. And how many Word of Faith churches re avoid this scripture at all costs? Because we, we preach a good God. But you know what? Chastisement and correction and reproof and rebuke come from good. Because they're trying to train you not to go down the road of destruction. Amen. The Lord, whom the Lord chaseth, loveth, he chasteneth. Now let me say this. He goes on and says this. And if the Lord chasteneth not, then are ye bastards indeed. Amen. Now see, people don't want to hear that. Right, he cussed in church. No, that means illegitimate. illegitimate. You're not a legitimate child of God. Amen. That's what the Bible says. 
he, he'll chasten you because he loves you. See, we accuse pastors of being mean and evil if, we ch if they chasten us when it's because they love us. Anybody can come along and tell you what you like to hear. Have you noticed how guest speakers come in? They blow in, blow up, and blow out. And everybody, whoo, that was awesome, Pastor Ed. I've never heard that before in my life. And I just did a 10-week series on it. Happens all the time. I mean, week before last, I said the exact same words. And they're going, whoo, that was awesome. <laughs> Pastor Ed, I'm so glad you brought him. I've never heard that. Go listen to last week's sermon. I just said it. That was the Holy Ghost confirming it was right. <laughs> anyway. But see, usually your guest speakers don't rebuke or, or reprove or correct. They just come in and, 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 and that's, why, that's good. That's fine. They put, the they put the fluff in there. They, tell you, they, they preach all the good side. But the pastor has to care for the flock. Amen. That's his responsibility. Amen. Amen. And the day we're living in, Satan will try to call you out. Y'all know what calling means, don't you? You go watch one of your nature shows, and in Africa the lion will find the weakest water buffalo, and they'll chase him down, and he'll get called out of the herd. As long as the herd is together, they can't get to him. But eventually that, that weak one will, will fall out or, or turn out, or get away from the rest, of the rest of the herd, and he's got him. Satan will do the same thing to you. He'll try to wear you down until he can get you called out, and then he's going to take you. You. Or for dinner, if you don't stay fat, stay fast. <laughs> let's stay, and let's, let's not only become spiritually sensitive, and next week we'll pick up here and tell you how to be spiritually sensitive. It's imperative. It's imperative in these days that we tune in. Dad Hagen used to say this. He'd say he'd sit something going. He said, I'd put my spiritual antenna up. You know, it takes some time to do that. What's that mean? You've got to turn Oprah off. Got to turn the rest of the junk off. Got to turn Dalton Abbey off. You can't turn Jack off. He's off the air now for until they, if they come, decide to come back with another Jack. <laughs> Hoping they'll come back with, with some more Jack. But anyway, you might just need to turn some things off. Go get on. Pray in the Holy Ghost until you still yourself. And you quieten yourself. And you can hear the voice of God. Now, Jesus said this. Now, the reason a lot of people aren't hearing his voice is because there's too much noise going on. And they have to still themselves, quieten themselves before God. And Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. And when you get yourself quiet, when all the voices of all your friends are telling you something that's not biblical, and the voices of all the television ministries that are telling you something that's not biblical. And the voice of all those around you who say that God's not ready. All the ambient noise around you has been stilled and silenced. You can hear the voice of God. He's not in the hurricane. He's not in the fire. He's not in the whirlwind. He's in a still small voice. And Jesus said, you'll know his voice. You'll hear from heaven. Church, I challenge you. We got to get more time set aside because there's perilous times around us. There are deceivers looking to deceive. And they, let me tell you something. They can market themselves and look like the newest, hottest, latest, greatest thing that's hit the planet since peanut butter and sliced bread. And everybody knows that peanut butter and sliced bread was an awesome thing. Yeah. Especially with some Welch's grape jelly on top of it. Eat ba 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 Hallelujah. I get mine so thick that when I bite the jelly, I mean, I've just gone into taste bud glory. And a glass of milk, ice cold milk. And use a Dr. Pepper as a chaser. Glass bottle Dr. Pepper, icy. When we making, make, being sensitive to the voice of the Spirit, a priority. Again, see, there are rules. He'll have to line up with the Word, or it's not Him. 
But Jesus said, you'll know his voice. And how will you know his voice? Because you know it lines up with the word. How are you going to line up with the word? You study Amen. to show yourself approved, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. What's that mean? It can be wrongly divided. Next week, we're going to give you the steps on how to be spiritually sensitive. We'll use, and you can go study, you can go ahead and read this this week. Uh, 1 Samuel uh, chapter 3, I believe it is. The whole 1 Samuel chapter 3. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.